Something that I absolutely love are little computers. Little things that I can use in a home lab environment. You can stick it on the back of a TV. Maybe you can use it in a workplace. Maybe you're rolling out a whole bunch of computers in a company and you just need something really, really small. Why would I want to get, why would you want to get a mini PC? I mean, the first reason is that they are space saving. They're little, they take up less space than a traditional computer. They're also cost effective because they're tiny. They don't cost as much as your big desktops that are out there. In my home lab, I've got big computers. I've got small computers and I'm gonna stick some of these mini PCs in there. I love to play around and tinker with new stuff and I also like things to be neat and clean and space saving. So these are the perfect addition for any home lab. So here is our lineup, all different shapes, all different sizes, and they all have their internal bits that make some more powerful than others. You need to be able to know your network, map your network, understand all the bits and pieces. And sometimes it's really hard just to sort of get a good high level overview of what is what. This is why I love a product called Fathom. You know, sometimes when you need to install monitoring apps and scanning apps on computers, you need to go and install an agent on every single device. And that can be really, really frustrating. Fathom is completely agentless application discovery and dependency mapping. It is great. Essentially it just scans your entire network and builds a nice map of your entire network so you know exactly what is what. A full discovery of your hybrid IT infrastructure, mapping all of your servers, your hypervisors, your hyperscalers, understanding your network. Fatim will give you a view of your clustered servers by business applications so that I can see exactly what is installed and where and how they all connect together. You'll be able to see what is what so you can manage that change even better. Understand where the root cause of some problems may be, assist with migrations, assist with your disaster recovery and your business continuity plans, compliance, cybersecurity, and more. Now being a big AI advocate, I love what's happening in AI. Future versions will also come equipped with AI and I'm really, really looking forward to that. Now here's the best thing is that it's really, really fairly priced and they even offer a free forever plan down below of this video description. I've got a link to it, so go and pick it up right now. You wanna become a better sysadmin? Give Fathom a shot. So once we've taken the wrapping off, I've opened the box up and here is our little computer. And boy, does it look nice. It's really light as well. Now inside of the box, we got all the usual stuff, your power, a HDMI, a little mount. So you can actually mount the unit as well, warranty cards and all of that. I like it. It feels pretty sturdy and it's really, really light. Like seriously light. On the front, we've got ourselves a couple of USBs, USBs, threes. Then on the back, you've got another couple of USBs. You've got two HDMI, so I can run my HDMI monitors. Then of course your ethernet jack, a headphone jack, and then your power. And how's this? To open it up, all I literally did was just pop the top off. My one came with a 16 gig slot of RAM and I can put a lot more in it. Just easily pop it out, put some new one in. And it came with an NVMe hard drive. I mean, these little things are awesome. They just sort of slot in. This one is a huge one terabyte, but of course you can go and change this as you need to. I just love the way that this thing looks inside. You pop it back in and then we go from there. Now, the nice thing about this unit is that it's cheap. Like it's super cheap. This is the Knuckbox G3 and they are pitching it as the most cost effective mini PC that comes with an Intel processor. I mean, this is cool. Out of the box, you can just get a bare bone version, which means it doesn't really come with anything on the inside. It also comes in a couple of colors, which includes the lush green and the titanium gray. Um, I'm gonna show you something. I've just logged into the BIOS on this thing and I found something on it that I couldn't believe. I'm like, is this thing actually legit on a $120 computer. Check it out. Can you see that thing in yellow? Virtualization technology. Yes, 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 it is booting. VMware's ESXi. How is that? I can't believe it. You can actually install a virtualization hypervisor on this literally $120 computer. Oh. This is Protectly's 
mini computer. I would actually say it's running like a server and it's got four ethernet points. It is compact, it's small, a nice big heatsink on the top, which means it's fanless. The CPU is an Intel Celeron J4125, boosting an incredible quad core, bursting up to 2.7 gigahertz, which is amazing. My module here came with 16 gig of RAM. It came with an M2 SSD SATA drive, which was a 480 gig. And I also got a additional one terabyte SSD installed. And because I'm gonna be using this for VMware, I can build a whole pool of VMs right on here. It comes with built-in Wi-Fi. And look at that, four one gigabit ethernet points. I mean, that is brilliant. I mean, I love that this is a all-in-one device. This thing has everything that I need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install VMware onto it. Now, VMware, of course, being a virtualization platform, there are others out there. You've got your Citrix, you've got your Microsoft Hyper-V, you've got Proxmox, but I like VMware. Now, one thing that you wanna make sure is that you do actually have the virtualization technology enabled on the BIOS. Then if all things work, you should be able to boot, using the boot menu, select your USB stick, and then you boot into the ESXi installation. I set my root admin credentials right here. It's good coffee. After your coffee break, it'll then be done. You then boot in, push F2 on your keyboard. First thing is go and set a static IP. And then once you're logged in, you're presented with the home screen of our ESXi showing you the model, the make of the computer. I actually went and created a couple of other VMs, a Kali Linux VM and a CentOS OS VM both flavors of Linux. I'm gonna go and power both of these things on, but let's go and have a look at the console. And here it is, booting up. Let's go and open up this one. Here's our two additional VMs, good to go. And then at the same time, I can go and console in to my DC, which is now ready to go. Here's our Kali Linux. You wanna learn a little bit about password attacks. You wanna do some wireless attacks. You wanna do some reverse engineering. And in our CentOS, and go into our file, Explorer, and there you go. Everything is ready to go right in there. So some time ago, I did review and talk about one of these things. And, and look at this, this is just a big old heatsink with a whole bunch of ports, but they've recently just released a second version. Now, comparing the two, this one is heavier. It's like metallic, while, I mean, this one's metallic too, but this one just feels a lot more sturdy. The Zimmer board too. And uh, has just a whole bunch of additional features, which I absolutely love. Now you do get storage built into the unit itself, but as I said, on the bottom, you've got your SATA ports. So I can actually run additional hard drives directly into the unit itself. And you want expansion cards, you can put an expansion card right over there. Two different versions available, one for $199. Like seriously, $199, you get eight gig of RAM and 32 gig of storage. Then you've got the one at $279. So for an extra little bit, 16 gig of RAM and a 64 gig version of storage. Intel processor, an N150 quad core up to 3.6 gigahertz to 2.5 gigabit ethernet points, which is so cool. The nice thing is I can get any of my PCI Express cards. So I've got a four port gigabit card. I've also got a one port 10 gigabit card. So giving me 10 gigabit on my Zimmer board too. I can remove the bracket because unfortunately the bracket will not allow the card to be clicked in correctly into the side of that Zimmer board. So you can remove that and that way you get that functionality. Now, what can I use this for? Well, look, I mean, yes, you can replace your existing computer. You can replace your NAS. You can run your server security software onto here. You can run Pi-hole to actually control your network, monitor things and protect your network even more. Other uses could be setting it up as a honeypot, essentially a spot where um, the bad people, you know, it's like a security thing where the bad people will see the device and go, oh, look, it's a domain controller. No, it's not a domain controller. It's a honeypot. You've just been caught with your hand in the pot stealing stuff. I love OpenVPN. This way I can run a VPN server at home and then I'm outside of my home. I connect it from my computer, I connect from my phone. One that I love, of course, is Home Assistant. If you've never played around with Home Assistant, go ahead and install that one because this allows me to really manage and control my entire house. I'm loving how much more powerful our Zimmer Board 2 is compared to the predecessor. This is a great little piece of tech. We need to ensure that we are on top of that YouTube algorithm. We want you to make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. So click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. Stay tuned as well for my next video. We continue talking about all things tech. We'll see you next time.